and gentlemen, please rise at this time for our national anthem, which we proudly dedicate to all the men and women now serving in the armed forces of the United States of America in harm's way. Please welcome to center ring to sing the Star Spangled Banner, Aramis. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight oh the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombersting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say doth that star spangled banner yet Let's look at the tail of the tape for Kelly Pavlik against Jermaine Taylor once again. Pavlik gives up, or excuse me, Taylor gives up four years in age to Pavlik. They first met when Pavlik was 17 and Taylor was 21 back in the amateurs. One inch height advantage for Kelly Pavlik. Arm length advantage of one inch measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. The catch weight for the fight was 166. Interestingly, both fighters weighed in at 164, suggesting they're both in terrific shape. Tonight, unofficially, Pavlik rises only five pounds to 169. Jermaine Taylor may outweigh him unofficially by a pound or two in the ring. And Larry, now that you've become an ardent punch counter, punch count numbers from the first fight. Well, Pavlik threw more and landed more, but it is notice notable that Taylor landed almost half of the punches he threw. That's about 30 punches around for the first six rounds. And let's remember that all three judges had Taylor ahead in that fight, which explains why the odds are only about eight to five in favor of Pavlik. Interestingly, one dissenter who felt that Pavlik was ahead in the fight was Taylor's trainer on that night, our Emmanuel Stewart. Harold, rules of the bout. The Kelly Pavlik, Jermaine Taylor fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the Unified Rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and he cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Little Rock, Arkansas's Jermaine Taylor. Five of his last six fights have gone the 12 round distance, which underlines the point, Larry, that you frequently make about Taylor, which is he does not have a background as a knockout hunter. So why contemplate knockouts as the deciding factor? Especially after you hit a guy 35 unanswered punches and you can't put him away. Jermaine Taylor was stung by criticism from home fans in Arkansas prior to the first Pavlik fight. Interestingly, Emmanuel Stewart 
He seems to have regained all that popularity despite having lost. I think the town uh, embraces him more, and they think he's more humble as probably, but Jermaine is, 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 is a true warrior. And that's the one thing that we can never underestimate. I've worked with him, and I think he's going to come out tonight and fight a fantastic fight. I think uh, his, his skills and stuff is going to be a big factor, particularly his fast left jab. In the wake of his big victory over Taylor, Kelly Pavlik has earned an identity as a sort of unofficial Mr. Down to Earth, the blue collar star of the sport. But now he has to keep his head straight amid the swirl of speculation about future fights, possible matchups with other big stars in the sport, and where ultimately his legacy is going to lie. It happens pretty fast. So far, Larry, he seems to be holding up well. Given that his title is not at stake, given that he knocked out his opponent tonight the last time, uh, he still seems grounded. Perhaps the fact that the fight has come so soon after the other one, it really hasn't sunk in that he is this world-beating, world-famous fighter. He still thinks he's got work to do. And he is a knockout puncher. 29 knockouts in 32 fights, nine straight. When he knocked out Edison Miranda last May in Memphis, he knocked out the man who was expected to be the knockout terror of the division. And therefore, he took that title before taking Taylor's middleweight championship title. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated and Lou DeBella's DeBella Entertainment are proud to present the main event of the evening, the rematch. 12 rounds of boxing at Super Middleweight. Sponsored by American Gangster, starring Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe. Own the two disc unrated edition on DVD and HD DVD this Tuesday. Brought to you in association with HBO Pay Per View and sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman John Bailey, Executive Director Keith Kaiser. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout Patricia Mars Jarman, Dave Moretti, and Glenn Trowbridge. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Tony Weeks. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we've all been waiting for from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, with silver, official weight, 164 pounds. This Olympic bronze medalist has a professional record of 27 victories, including 17 knockouts, with only one defeat and one bout even. From Little Rock, Arkansas, former undisputed middleweight champion of the world, Jermaine. Bad intentions! Hey! And fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with red, official weight also 164 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 32 bouts. 32 victories, including 29 knockouts. He's the blue-collar fighting pride of Youngstown, Ohio. Title not on the line tonight. The middleweight champion of the world, Kelly, the Ghost Hanley.
Okay, Kelly, Jermaine, you both received your instructions in the dressing room. Okay, right here is good, anything else is gonna be low. Right here is good, anything else is gonna be low. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times, above all, protect yourself at all times. Let's go. Sometimes a fighter doesn't recover from a knockout. Sometimes an unbeaten fighter doesn't recover from his first defeat, having lost his sense of dominance and destiny. How will Taylor handle this event, this opportunity to turn it around? Will it be round one of the rematch, or is it round eight in Atlantic City? Some of that depends on who lands the first big shot. Kelly Pavlik just missed with a glancing right hand chopping blow. Taylor goes to work with his jab, which some regard as his best weapon. And the crowd begins to chant for Pavlik. For them, this is a tactical start to the fight. Good thudding jab by Pavlik. Knocks Taylor back a half a step. Emmanuel, what do you see so far? Well, I, I, was, I was really concerned about who could establish the best jab because Jermaine's biggest punch has always been and what attracted him to me was his left jab, a great left jab. And Kelly in the last fight surprised me by actually I jamming him. So it's going to be a jamming contest at the beginning. Whoever can establish a jab, I think the best is going to really just set the pace for this fight. Having trained Jermaine Taylor for four fights prior to this one, you see anything different that he's doing compared to what he did with you? Well, I think he's working behind his jab, and I think he seems to be a... I just see more determination in his face for this fight than he did in the first fight. Seems to be, and he's more settled. He was very hyped and very nervous for the last fight. Good jab by Taylor. Snaps Pavlik's head back. Pavlik returns the favor. Both have landed their jab in the first round. Good body shot by Pavlik as Taylor missed over the top with the right hand. Good jab by Taylor. Right and a left, a good sharp hook inside by Pavlik. Pavlik notably trying to keep his gloves high so that he can't get caught by one of those big looping punches. See, Jermaine's strategy for this fight, I figure, was to try to outdo what he's doing. But the, the only thing that concerns me, when he gets tired or he gets under pressure, will he resort back to the habit he's dead for the last couple of years, which is going straight to the ropes, in addition to dropping his hands? Hard right hand by Pavlik. How does Taylor respond? Left hook by Pavlik. Big left hook by Pavlik. But Jermaine Taylor comes back. Will Pavlik get over anxious? Taylor not badly hurt, though he's landed some big shots, has Kelly Pavlik. And now Jermaine Taylor with a shot. And a good left hook by Taylor. Both guys are making a mark in the first round, just as was the case in Atlantic City. by Pavlik, that one a little bit more extended. Not quite as thudding as the first one. Stop, 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 stop. Come on, watch the back Taylor here. might have won the jamming contest in that round, but Pavlik landed the bigger shot. Bingo. Come Go to his weak side. He's going to his strong side. Going to the right hand, baby. Going to the right side. Hey, stay in behind your jab, son. Speed. Don't stay in the pocket. Once you get your punch off, flip. Go point. Talked about. We got him going backwards. Once that happens, we got it. But you got to stay busy. You got to keep your hands up. Don't get lazy in there. Beautiful. Take a deep breath for me. One more. Oh, you can see Kelly land his signature punch, which is a jab followed by a right hand, and, it's, and Jermaine really got caught. He didn't do anything wrong with just a perfect left jab that obstructed his vision. Copy box numbers in round one. Kelly Pavlik, 26 out of 66, including 14 of 39 jabs. Taylor, 17 out of 51. 13 out of 41 jabs. So they were really even in the jab category according to Copy Box. And just as Larry said, Pavlik landed the bigger shots. Harold Letterman gives the first round to Kelly. Emmanuel. 
Daniel, how significant is Pavlik's height, given that Jermaine Taylor is a tall middle white weight and has seldom, if ever, faced fighters taller than himself in his weight category? I think it's a, a good factor because of the fact that not only is he taller, he fights tall. And Jermaine has a tendency sometimes as he goes on, and not only will he drop his left hand, but he bends his head down lower to make it no easier to get hit with right hands. And Kelly has studied him very well over that. But Kelly fights tall in addition to just being tall. This is round two, the round in which Taylor nearly knocked Kelly Pavlik out in Atlantic City, and Jermaine Taylor has landed some very healthy shots in the first minute of this round, continuing to jab very well, as is Pavlik. It's an offensive fight, and both guys are scoring. Well, I just see Jermaine is slowly starting to back back a lot more, and, and that's the one thing you can do. Jermaine has a good right hand, but he has a tendency, as his promoter, Luda Bella, say, is a bow and arrow type. He jabs and he kind of winds up on the right hand, and you can see it coming. It's a hard right, but you see it coming. That's why he doesn't have the amount of knockouts he should have. Where Kellis is a little bit more deceiving the way he shoots it. Well, and, and one other subtle difference. I think at the end of the day, Havlick's punches are straighter. And straighter punches get to the target faster. Yeah, very simple and straight. But I see a lot of determination in the eyes of Jermaine Taylor. He's, he's fighting just as if, as he talked to you, he's fighting the fight of his life, this fight here. And you can see he's determined to win this fight if it's any way possible. And I think he's going to end up now going back to the ropes more and more under the pressure. Well, the pressure is the real point here because Pavlik wants to keep Taylor working three minutes around, hoping that he tires later without jeopardizing himself by leaving himself too open. Good oh, right, right hand. hand by Taylor. He left himself open that time. A couple of body shots. Taylor missed with an uppercut. Pavlik wants to keep backing Taylor up. He hasn't been able to do it all the time in this round. Jermaine need to get back to his jab. As long as he's jabbing in, you can set up. You can't see what he's going to do. But he's, right now, he's not jabbing enough. And if you don't, Kelly will slowly take control over the fight again. Left hook by Pavlik. Taylor answers with a right. Good jab by Taylor there. Pavlik with his own jab. Slowly, inexorably, Pavlik continues to make his point by going forward and backing Taylor up. That's the heart of his strategy, and it's working so far. Now! I need some head movement in there, okay? Give this kid some head movement and give this kid some fucking feints, all right? Yeah. Bridget, come on. He ain't doing anything different, Kel. He's right there. He's not doing anything different. Look for that damn body, okay? When you get him to these ropes, bang, bang, bang. Uh huh, uh huh. Another thing, Kelly, look at me. Look. You got your knee straight You're straightening that knee, bend it. Bend it. Okay. Hand here. I mean, you slip it in now. Drive it. Doing good. Looking good. Are we going to keep that left hand going? Protect yourself at all times. Here you see a right hand very similar to the right hand that caused all of the damage in the first round in the second, uh, se se second round in the first fight. It's almost identical punch. This is the type of fight that Taylor was doing well in in the third to the sixth rounds of the first fight. Second round was definitely better for Taylor. Harold Letterman gives him the round, evening it up on the scorecard. You saw in CompuBox stats between rounds that Jermaine Taylor's punch output has dropped tonight from what he threw in Atlantic City. That's a little bit misleading, perhaps, because the big punch output in the first two rounds in Atlantic City was partially produced by the assault on Pavlik in round two. Taylor landed 42 out of 50 power shots in the second round in Atlantic City. That's an extraordinary number, which we are not likely ever to see duplicated between the two again. Uh, Kelly is starting to find his range with his jab right now in this round here. And that's something that Jermaine needs to not let him. Jermaine got to get back to working his jab himself. When he pick, picks Kelly's jab off with his glove and then counters with his own jab, he out-jabs he out Kelly. And he's got to get to doing it again. And so he's letting Kelly shoot jabs, and Kelly's doubling up on his jabs now. Emmanuel, and then there are two, two and then a right hand. Emmanuel, you're sounding like the trainer standing <laughs> in the fighter's corner. <laughs> And it's obviously why you have to do that. You've spent a couple of years in this corner. Jermaine Taylor insisted in a meeting with us yesterday that he would go to the body much more than in the first fight. That has not happened so far, though there were a couple of good body shots in round two. 
Pavlik threw 66 punches in each of the first two rounds. He would like to get it up to about 80 or 90. That's the pace at which he really likes to fight. Chopping right hand across the top by Taylor after two body shots by Kelly Pavlik. So it's Pavlik who started to think body a little bit. Perhaps trying to get that punch count up. Taylor. No, no, Tonight, think, Kelly uh, Pavlik is seeing them coming a little better. Yeah, Kelly is fighting the same fight he fought before. I think Jermaine is showing a lot more intensity, a little bit more patient tonight. But uh, Kelly's fighting the same basic fight, which is to try to eventually start dominating the fight with his jab. But uh, Jermaine, if he works his jab, Jermaine can set up a lot of things because he has a much faster jab, left jab than Kelly. There's the Pavlik jab. Stop, 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 stop. Neither fighter really loves infighting. They both like to operate from punchless distance. Right hand and a left hook by Taylor. Pavlik covered up. Now goes back to work. Good jab by Taylor. Well, are fighting a much more disciplined fight than the first time. A boxer's fight. Looks like he's learned something from watching the tapes of the first fight. Ha! Stand straight in front of this kid. Bend those knees, baby, and work. Thank God. Thank God. Get the bucket up. Get the bucket up. Thank God. Too. Oh. What's that? Did you win that round? Yeah. He's a damn right there. Step on with the right hand. How's it feel? Come on, babe. Nice to be Mr. Huh? Yes, sir. Good job. Good job. Hey, breathe. She appears a little bit okay. Slip her patience a little bit. Go. Compu box numbers through round three. Pavlik has thrown twice as many, but they've landed about the same number. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? I'll get you two rounds to one. 29, 28. Jermaine Taylor. Jim, in rounds two and three, I thought Jermaine just landed the clean of hardest shots with that right hand. I mean, he really, really landed some nice right hands. So he won those two rounds of clean punching. Kelly Pavlik backed him up, landed the left jab, and some good right hands to win the first round. Two to one, Jermaine Taylor, based on clean punching. Other man has been hurt. Both have landed some very solid shots. Well, one thing I give Jermaine credit for, he has not went to the ropes this time. He's done a fantastic job of staying in the center of the ring. We've had four fights, a total of 28 rounds on this boxing card so far, and not a single clinch that I can remember in any of the four fights. No clinches here. Stop, stop, stop. I got you. Let him up, let him up. the most tactical round of the fight so far, and the crowd sort of settles in as though for the long haul. But what's having the most dominant punch in the fight now turned out to be the left jab of Kelly. Jermaine has got to get back. He's, he's winning, he's throwing a lot of punches that are not landing as clean as it seems to the crowd, but Kelly's consistently just pumping that left jab all the time. And gradually, we start to see a pattern that developed toward the end of the first fight, which is the Jermaine wings punches to the outside, sometimes both hands left and right, while Pavlik resolutely keeps going straight up the middle. And his jab, his jab connect percentage is getting to be very high right now. Good left hook by Pavlik off the straight right hand. Another right hand for Pavlik. Taylor with a good jab, and another good jab. Needs to keep working it. Hard right hand by Taylor. That's what happens when he lands his jab. Good left hook by Taylor. 
And I think he's going to be smart to make sure he places the punches and not get too excited like he did the first fight. Body shot by Kelly Pavlik. More and more, he's investing in those to go with the jab. See, even though Kelly All has right a hand by Pavlik and another. Taylor jabs again to move him back. Another hard right hand by Pavlik, and Taylor comes back with a wild ah. winging left hook. Good whatever, fight. Whatever else you can say, the knockout and the defeat have had a positive there. effect on, on good, Jermaine good. Taylor. Listen, even it up there, okay? We're in there now. Listen, it's all we got to do. We got to get through the next couple rounds, okay? This kid is fading already. He's yeah. starting yeah. to fade. Big, all right, you hear me? He's starting to fade. Big, big one. Get that second breath. How you Calm down, babe. Calm yeah. down. Calm down. Calm down. Relax. You get hit if you stay. Relax. In the middle. All right. Then where you're, where you're not going to stay? In the middle. All right. Come on. You can do it. Just no, no, start no, working out. Pop, pop. Right hand. Right hand down the palm. Absolutely. If you throw that throw, throwing that right hand short right over his jab, and you step over. You step over. Easy night. I still like to see that right hand. CompuBox sees the same thing you're seeing, Emmanuel. In the fourth round, Kelly Pavlik, 16 out of 49 in the jab category to 8 of 22 for Taylor. So Kelly Pavlik focusing on the jab, stepping up the tempo, building his punch count. Maybe behind on the scorecards, but is fighting the strategy he wants to fight. Well, I think both guys are fighting a little bit so what they wanted to do, but, but Jermaine right now was, I thought would be trying to move around and give him more angles, but he's more and more gradually starting to, you know, uh, do less jabbing, which I think he needs to jab a lot more, and then set up the sneaky punches over top. But so far, it's a very good competitive fight, and Jermaine is throwing his punches, I think, a lot shorter when he does throw his power punches than he did the first fight. Even though Kelly Patrick has a high knockout rate, and he's never, I've never considered him a, a really big puncher. He's a systematic guy who gra gradually wears you down, and then he stops you, but not just a single big one punch. And that's what he's going for tonight, to try to gradually grind Jermaine down. Isn't that true of most knockout artists, Emmanuel? Only time you hear is one of them, and Mike Tyson. These are guys who knocked out quality fighters in the first and second rounds. That was punching power. But uh, Kelly's on the line of the great fighters like Marvin Hagler, who systematically just wore guys down. How does Pavlik's punching power compare to that of Marvin Hagler? I think Marvin may have been a little better puncher, believe it or not. But see, Marvin fought so many top quality name fighters of his era that he didn't knock them out that easy. But uh, Kelly hasn't had, not as his fault, just not many good top middleweights up there. But I think Kelly's just a good puncher, not a great puncher, but he puts things together so well that he gradually wears him down and then knocks him out. Jermaine Taylor is punching more accurately tonight than has been his norm in the past. The work rate of Kelly is, is becoming to be a bigger, bigger factor. You think that Jermaine does not have the stamina to go three minute rounds hard back to back to back? I don't know, but this is, he so far he's been doing extremely well and he's, you know, very fighting, very conservative, placing his punches. But uh, I don't know, after going down the stretch, that's what Kelly's depending on is to wear down in about six rounds or seven rounds. Right hand by Pavlik brings blood from Taylor's nose. Left nostril now leaking blood. Pavlik will go after it again with right hands. Jab is setting up a lot of things, and it's starting to bother Jermaine a lot, simply because he's not doing nothing about it. He should pick and return, but he's, and, and that's what he should do more often. Hard left hook by Taylor. Leather, skin, sweat, and blood. Good fight, and both fighters acknowledge it to each other. Good body work, baby. Baby, we've got to get more body. Come on, baby, we've got to get more body. We got to, we got to break that body down, baby. B, baby, still looking good. We looking good. Looking good. 
I want to flare it every night now and then. Offset it. If I go at the same pace, I want, to, I want you to offset that. It's going to come, baby, OK? Huh? Some water. It's there. It's there. It's a matter of time. Here you see Kelly Pavlik once again landing this left jab. I and mean, notice the gloves are not even closed. It's more than just a camouflage. He uses it to blind you over your left eye before he lands his right hand. And that's why he steadily keeps pumping those jabs. And when he feels his right, he's shooting those right hands in there after. But Jermaine is doing a great job right now, pretty much just outpowering him with combinations and not fighting because he's not matching him jab for jab. Kelly Pavlik, 24 out of 74 by CompuBox count in the fifth round. Taylor, 20 out of 43. Pavlik's work rate beginning to show up, but Taylor's still landing a higher percentage of his punches. Those fast hands of his. Something that should be noted. We know that Taylor has had problems with stamina uh, in the past. But Kelly Pavlik has only gone past eight rounds once. And that was a ninth round knockout. Yeah, but he's here so relaxed. You, you look at the study about it, like but he's so relaxed in there. Where Jermaine, even though he's landing punches, he's still tense. He just, he just, that's his nature, Jermaine. He's a really high tense, uh, hyper type guy. And that thing, that burns up a lot of his energy. But Kelly's totally relaxed. Stop, I got you, I got you. Jermaine is having problems with the jab now. He's flinching, he's reaching, he's blocking. He's, he's getting preoccupied so much with the jab of Kelly, and that's what Kelly wants him to do. That is nine straight unanswered punches by Pavlik. And that's what he's doing. 10, 11, 12. They aren't landing necessarily, but there finally is an answer from Taylor, who seemed to be trying to catch a rest in the middle of the round, and now rips Kelly Pavlik with a hard right hand. But the difference is Kelly's consistent, though. Jermaine is having explosions and then takes a break, and Kelly comes right back and keeps pumping him. Keep working it, keep working it. And Jermaine is punching in explosions and then want to rest, but Kelly won't let him rest. The relentless work rate of Kelly Pavlik, the dynamic explosions of Jermaine Taylor. Good body work by Good Taylor, which is unusual for him. Stop, stop, stop. Kelly, Kelly can't match Jermaine for hand speed, and he knows that. He's just trying to win by consistency. Jermaine is placing his punches very good, and thus far may have really won this round. Stop, stop, I'm up, I'm up. I can't see that. Too much difference in the number of punches thrown and landed. But the crowd gets excited over those big wide punches, and then maybe some of the judges may too. Hard left hand by Taylor. Stop Pavlik in his tracks. In addition to everything else, both fighters showing good chins tonight. Ten seconds to go to the halfway point of the fight. Ah. How's your condition, man? Good. Feel good. Great, great. Because his eight, his eight, believe me. Okay? But you can't stand straight up. Gotta keep pushing him, keep pushing him back, keep pushing him back, keep pushing him back. We're halfway through the fight. Okay? He can't go this pace, I'm telling you, for Breathe 12. Breathe through your mouth. Breathe through your mouth. No, no water yet. Right. Breathe through your mouth. Breathe, breathe. Come on. Come on. Breathe. 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 Good work. Beautiful. Five shots, good. Let's keep doing it. Beautiful body, baby. Still, you need to start going to the weak side. I know, coach. A little Come on. more body, a little more weak Every time you throw that jab, you bust with the right hand every time. Use your leg, don't stand there. Watch it, Watch it. You feel Boxing. okay? You're killing it with your jab. You're looking beautiful. <laughs> you got to get more punches, so, okay? More punches. Copy box numbers in the six. Pavlik 17 out of 66. Taylor throwing 31 punches. His low output of the fight, landing 13. Harold, how do you have it halfway through? Look at you. Four rounds to two. 58, 56, Jermaine Taylor. Jim, I gotta say something about judging boxing, what the judges should be looking for. I'm not counting punches as a judge. What I'm doing is I'm looking to see who's doing more damage. I'm saying, who's hurting the other guy worse? And I think that Jermaine Taylor is the stronger, more powerful guy so far. Four to two, Jermaine Taylor.
I have the fight even. Hopkins fight after getting a severe cut in his forehead and a concussion now after he's the working, fourth round. Now Jermaine is working that beautiful left jab, and he would do that all night. Kelly would have a lot of problems. And then he would be able to land those power shots even better than he's landed them now. This is the round, of course, in which Pavlik eliminated Taylor in Atlantic City, and so far the body language for Taylor in the seventh looks better tonight than was the case back in September. Interesting CompuVox uh, observation is that Taylor's power punch outfit has dropped dramatically. He's throwing, by CompuBox count, fewer than half as many power punches tonight as he threw in Atlantic City, which maybe will help him to preserve the stamina that he said he lost in the first fight. You think the extra few pounds means anything? Well, in this Emmanuel, case, it, 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 does, it doesn't look like it's making. Yeah, I think both guys are a little stronger maybe than they were at the last fight. But Jermaine's hand speed is right now a big, big factor for him in this fight. Good body shot by Taylor. Havlick still coming forward when he can. Stop, stop. I got you. stretches in which the work is all Kelly Pavlik and Taylor just isn't punching back. Whether he's trying to get a rest, can't find an opening, he allows Pavlik to throw 15, 20 unanswered shots. Now the body flurry by Taylor. And he reaches for a jab upstairs but doesn't get there. Beautiful night in Las Vegas. The lights are on. The electricity bill is very high. The city can pay it. We'll bring it right back up. Good work. Very good work. Can you that mouth a little bit? Yo, you can make it really easy if you double that fucking jab. Okay, my man? Yes, yes. That's where I need you, right there. Okay? When you back him up, whip that right hand Bring underneath your that fucking Bring elbow. You got me? Yes. I got you. I know. All right, it's baby. Up, Come on. Okay. You got five more to go. Copy box average for round through round seven. Havlick 21 out of 69. Taylor 15 out of 38. Can he beat Kelly Pavlik, throwing significantly fewer punches per round? We shall see. Well, when a guy with the hand speed of Jermaine, even if he doesn't land clean blows sometimes, it creates a lot of excitement, like the flare at the end to the body, even though they may be partially blocked, but it creates a lot of excitement with the crowd in Alton Town with the judges. Which can neutralize the consistent work of a guy like Kelly Pavlik in terms of scoring. to clinch a little bit more to get a blow. Taylor doing a much better job tonight of handling Kelly Pavlik's right hand than was the case in Atlantic City. Pavlik hasn't landed as many solid shots with the right. Yeah, but that was when he was exhausted and fatigued when he was landing those punches. 
He keeping his hands up very good and had a knife, which, which is very impressive to me. But I'm just worried about him starting to back. If he doesn't back back to those ropes as he gets tired. seems to me like one of those primaries in which one of the fighters is casting a lot more votes. Taylor has flurries that look spectacular, but Pavlik is grinding, grinding, throwing, throwing, and backing Jermaine up all the time. Good shot by Taylor. Pavlik blocks that one with his gloves. I see the trickle of blood from the left nostril of Pavlik. That's been there before. And, and outside of the left jab of Pavlik coming through, Jermaine has been very successful in blocking the right-hand punches and all of the other punches coming from Kelly. He's, his defense is very good tonight. The only thing he's having a problem with is Kelly's jab, but everything else he's neutralizing. Well, both of them have gone to school on the first fight, being more deliberate. They're trying to protect stop, themselves stop, 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 stop. a little bit better. So what we have is an intense boxing contest. Pavlik blocked those shots with his gloves, landed his jab, sneaks in a right hand. Taylor lands a big right hand shot. Tries to come back with a left hook. Pavlik straightens himself out, keeps coming forward behind the jab. Hands free, hands free, hands free. Stop, 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 stop. That's a bell. The exchanges just at the bell have been very good. Shake no fucking hands with nobody. Yeah, quit shaking his hand. He's looking, Fuck for, it. Your, he's looking for your, for your uh, kindness. Listen That's to me. Shit. Yeah. You can't listen to me, baby. I hear you. Okay? I'm all ears. You win, you win. Can you pick it up? Yes, sir. Okay, then let's do it, all right? Go around no, baby. Go around we got. Okay. All right. All right, babe. Looking good. Right, Keep boxing. Right. Keep, Very Keep good picking work. Very good work. Pick him let's apart. Pick it up now. Keith, let's pick it up, Come baby. Pick it up. Alvarez. Jab numbers from CompuBox in round eight. Pavlik 21 out of 39. Taylor 7 out of 19. Taylor did land eight of his 11 power shots, but he only threw 30 punches in the round. It's even on Harold Letterman's scorecard so far. Larry, you've talked in the past about Kelly Pavlik's poise under pressure. There was an indicator of it there when Jack Lowe said, listen to me between rounds, and Pavlik said, I'm all ears, as though having a conversation in a bar. Well, that speaks to the relaxation that Emmanuel referenced earlier. He is one falcon who hears the falconer. And you know, he, he's doing, when you consider, uh, he's not no super coordinated stop, guy, stop, not, stop, stop, not gifted with a lot of superior skills that a lot of boxers have, but just his intelligence and his consistency is what's got him where he is. Whereas Jermaine has got way more skills. He, just the idea is Jermaine just could be consistent and fight consistently for the whole round, he would be unbeatable. Well, you're talking about skills. I don't know how you measure it. It's a skill to be able to follow, fight intelligently. It's a skill to be able to fight persistently over a long fight. Skill is more than just hand speed, in my view. I'll never forget once when John McEnroe said to me, I got more talent in my little finger than Yvonne Lindell has in his whole body. And I said, John, do you have the talent to go work out for eight hours at a time? Exactly. Stop. I got you, I got you. One left hook by Taylor. Another good left hand by Taylor. Rips Pavlik again. Pavlik keeps coming forward. Taylor's eyes are swelling shut on both sides. Probably not enough yet to bother his vision, though. Well, 
worse than me. Kelly keeps uh, throwing that right hand, and Jermaine keeps his left hand up blocking it all the time. I'm surprised that Kelly hasn't changed up and just shot a left uppercut or a right uppercut. He's doing the same thing, and then Jermaine is catching. Well, if it keeps time. working, why would he change it? I don't think he's getting close <laughs> enough to throw the uppercut, Emmanuel, because Taylor's backing off. Taylor's punch is winging there and missing. And now there's a good shot. Jay Kelly comes right back, continuing, and the beat goes on. And Kelly has been the one coming forward for most of the fight. Which impresses many judges. Ah. The man need more punches. Need more punches, baby. Huh? All right. Three. Take a deep breath, boy. Round 10. It's round 10, baby. Now it's time to work. It's work now. It's work time. Go ahead. Hey, hey, raise the mouth. Go like that. All right. All right, come on. Wipe him, wipe him, wipe him. Okay, listen. We got to fight now, man. Okay, we got to work him. It's a close fucking fight, man. We got to work him. Okay, do not let this motherfucker take this off you, baby. Okay? Okay. We got to work. You got this kid going backwards. Don't let up on him. Don't let up on him. All right, baby. Little swift. Get the bucket. Get the bucket. This has become a repetitive litany in the ninth round. Kelly Pavlik threw 49 jabs. Jermaine Taylor threw 36 total punches, according to CompuBox. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Look at you. Five rounds to four. 86, 85, Kelly Pavlik. Jim, who do you like? The harder hitter or the busier guy? Now, the last three rounds, seven, eight, and nine, I like the busier guy. Kelly Pavlik coming forward, throwing more jabs, you know, throwing that right hand behind the left jab, backing up Jermaine Taylor, but obviously, Jermaine Taylor, the harder hitter. I went with the busier guy the last three rounds. I thought Taylor just didn't do enough. Five, four, Pavlik. I have it 6-3, Pavlik. I don't know how you can tell that Taylor is the heavy hitter. He... That's that's what a judge has got to do, Larry. I know, but I don't know how you can tell. What has he done? He's landed some good punches, so is Pavlik. But uh, be that as it may, um, Pavlik thinks it's a close fight, and this is the farthest that Pavlik has ever gone in a price fight. He's never gone to the 10th round before. I got a question. If Taylor's the harder hitter, why is he all swollen up and Pavlik's not? Because <laughs> Kelly Pavlik has led in the most consistent punch in this entire fight has been the left jab of Kelly Pavlik. That's been consistently. Everything else is in spots, but the left jab is landing consistently. Nobody's ever questioned Jermaine Taylor's guts. Courage is perhaps his greatest asset. So he'll be here for the next three rounds. And this is the first time in his professional career, in his 33rd fight, this is the first time Kelly Pavlik's ever been to round 10. It's old news for Jermaine Taylor, who's had many 12-round fights. It's interesting, outside of the first round, Jermaine hasn't been hit with too many right hands. Hard right hand over the top by Taylor. Pavlik goes back to work with the jab. Pavlik landed a very good short right hand on the inside. Taylor took it very well. Yeah, I think considering the way they punched in Atlantic City and the fact that both are four give pounds him, heavier tonight, both have shown world-class chins. Taylor's best round in a little while. Havlick's going to work hard in these last 30 seconds to try to win it. So good we, jab by Taylor. Two good left hooks by Taylor. He's busier in this round. Taylor's starting to throw more combinations than has been the case in recent rounds. Stop, I got you. Stop, stop, stop. Ten rounds complete. Two to go. In Las Vegas, Nevada. Two rounds. 
Let him ground, guys. You have to double the jab, okay? okay. We need Breathe through your mouth, baby. Rounds, okay? You have to back this kid up. Breathe through your mouth. You have to beat him. We need these two rounds to work hard. Breathe through your mouth. Okay? All right? Yep. Okay, babe. Do you see how you connect the beautiful, beautiful left hook to the body? Yep. yep. You got to do more than that. You got to get busy. Okay? Two rounds to take it. All right. When you throw that one, two, take that two down low. Come on, I'm going to say that right here. Off the round. Off the day, I sit that right hand down low. That's right. Off the day, Send him used to the day out there. He gonna fall back in. Sit that right hand right here. Very nice. Three. Woo. All right. Okay. Two rounds. In the tenth round, Taylor threw 46 punches. That's his highest number in several rounds. And he landed 15. It's the first round in quite a while in which he outlanded Kelly Pavlik. Now we go to the championship rounds 11 and 12. Once again, Pavlik's never been here. Taylor's been here twice with Bernard Hopkins, with Winky Wright, and on various other occasions as well. And on the last round, Kelly looked a little sloppy, a little fatigued as he's throwing his punches, but they don't have the much crispness that they had a little bit better early on the fight. And Jermaine is still punching when he does punch with the same speed and crispness. He just doesn't punch that often, but when he does, he's very explosive and very sharp. He has been to the ropes one time in this fight. I'll give him credit for that, right? It, it, he did a fantastic job of staying off the ropes. Conquering what has been stop, criticized stop, stop, stop. relentlessly as one of his most bad What's habits. There hasn't been a clinch in the fight. Also, he's did a good job of blocking right hands, too. Good body shot by Taylor with the left. Tries to come back with the right. Stop, I got you. These last five minutes of the fight may decide it. Do you think that regardless of the outcome of this fight, Emmanuel stop, stop, that Taylor has redeemed himself from the first fight? Definitely, he's not only he's redeemed himself, and also Kelly Pavlik has seen him been come down in his image a little bit because he was riding across the two great wins over on, Miranda on, and up, Taylor. Okay. So I think that Jermaine Taylor's image goes up, and I think so. Slightly a little bit, I think that Kelly well, just came down a little bit slightly. Well, if you're expecting a knockout every time, is it? But um, Stop. I don't believe in that that sort of stuff. But Taylor has fought as well as he can. He's fought smart, and he's showing now that he's fighting tough as well. That's the closest thing to a real clinch that we've seen all night, right there. Came in the 11th round. Body shot by Pavlik, right hand over the top. In case you missed it, about a minute ago there was a warning to Taylor for low blows. That was the first real warning of the fight. Something definitely throw a right hand to the body when Jermaine put his head up. Uh, and uh, but anyway, this seems to be his round. I mean, Jermaine seems to be very fatigued now. The first time his back hit the ropes yeah. all night long. And uh, it looks like he's about to go down. He's very tired. I think Pavlik just surged in the last minute of that round. Sort of a rough three minutes for Jermaine. The next round. Jermaine, where were you when he got you? Come on, on baby. The ropes, exactly. Stay Man, the last, ropes. last freaking round. Come on, baby. Oh, no, you got to have him. You got to have him. What you got left? But you got to be smart. You got to be smart. The body killing, body killing him, man. Yes. He don't like that fucking. Every time you touch that body, he wants to grab. You got to get in his ass. You understand me? Yeah. Oh, we need to knock down, baby. We need to knock down. We need to beat his ass as well. Last round. Here you can see. Fallen in a few times and he went to the ropes me the first time and this is what happens a vicious body shot underneath instead of throwing a regular one two to the head and I think that took a lot of energy out of Jermaine from that point on he's been very weak Havlick landed 24 punches in the round according to copy box Taylor landed only 10 his low total of the fight the last minute of the round clearly belonged to Kelly Pavlik what now happens in round 12 
Pavlik comes back with two hard shots of his own. Jermaine is fighting a very determined fight. He's very tired. Stop, stop, stop. He's going to fight until there's nothing left in him. And Kelly still have to be a little careful somewhere because he can still get caught. Taylor's right eye has swelled up to stop, grotesque stop, stop, proportions. Stop, 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 stop. But it still doesn't seem to bother his vision. Havlick's landed that left job jab over and over and over. I got you. I got you. Taylor backing stop, away stop, there. Stop, stop. Needs to throw. Needs to use his fast hands. Throw combinations. Pavlik is the same fighter he was in the first fight. Taylor hasn't been. And, uh, and before stamina and pattern, the same fight he was in the first round. Three punches for Pavlik, one for Taylor. Pavlik just looks steadier on his feet. Has more energy. But Taylor is still coming up with those big moments and fast flurries. Jab and right hand by Taylor, or by Pavlik. Taylor with a left hook. Second big clinch of the fight. Does Taylor not sense that he's got to put on a big flurry here, that he's got to try to do some serious damage, Emmanuel? I think he feels it, but I think he's very tired. He's doing the best that he can. I mean, looking at his legs and, his, and his body motion, he's, he's a, totally exhausted. And Pavlik bounces back into position yeah. and goes back to work with the jab. The energy is all Pavlik. The desperation is helping Taylor. Jab by Pavlik. Taylor backing up when he needs to throw. Jab and right hand by Pavlik. Body shot by Pavlik. I got you, little though. Taylor not getting off anything significant during that stretch. Right hand missed, left hand landed for Taylor. Good body shot for Jermaine. Going forward one last time. Ten seconds to go. Jab by Pavlik. Taylor misses, now lands a body shot. They trade inside, and that's going to do it. What a fight. Mutual respect at center ring. Yeah, very good fight. I'm both guys fought a very determined and focused fight. Two guys who fought 19 of the best rounds we've seen in the last few years. And very few clinches. I don't know how Harold has it yet. 115, I, 113, Pavlik. I had it 116 to 112, but um, my guess is the scores will be a little closer to what Harold has. Here are the judges who will be scoring the fight. Patricia Jarman, veteran judge here in Nevada, 66 title fights. One of the five Nevada judges who preferred Jermaine Taylor over Bernard Hopkins in their two 12-round matches here in Las Vegas. Dave Moretti, also one of the five Nevada judges who preferred Jermaine Taylor over Bernard Hopkins. The only one who didn't was Jerry Roth in the first of the two fights between the two. And then Glenn Crowbridge, 12 title fights, least experienced of the three, had Oleg Moskayev ahead of Hasim Rachman 105-104 in August of 2006. Now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Dave Moretti, 117-111. Patricia Moss Jarman, 115-113. Glenn Drawbridge, 116, 112, all to the winner by unanimous decision. Still undefeated from Youngstown, Ohio, Kelly. The Ghost Pavlin. A terrific fight. And another victory for Pavlik, architected on his sturdy consistency, his constant work rate, 
his mechanical, relentless desire to keep winning. Yeah, it was a fight that I think both of the guys, you know, I know Jermaine Taylor's stock definitely went up. Uh, and he fought a good fight, too. Just the consistent work rate of Kelly Pat was too much for Jermaine, who normally fights in spots, as I said, and then he likes to take breaks, but Kelly would keep working while Jermaine would take his breaks, and that turned out to be the big difference in the decision. 33 wins in a row for Kelly Pavlik, 29 of them by knockout. Taylor slips to 27, 2 and 1 in his 30 fights. CompuBox numbers, Kelly Pavlik landing 89 more, throwing nearly 400 more punches over the course of the 12 rounds. Very difficult to beat a man over 12 rounds if he's throwing 400 more punches than you do. Jabs, Pavlik landing 42 more, throwing 192 more. And power shots, Pavlik landing nearly 50 more, 47 more, and throwing nearly 200 more than did Jermaine Taylor. It's the work rate, it's the constant output, it's the never stop in Kelly Pavlik that won him the fight, and Larry Merchant stands by with the still middleweight champ who won tonight. Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Kelly. Why was this fight so different than the first one? Smart fighter, he sat there, knew what he had to do. Um, every time his back got close to the ropes, he bounced off, sat there, danced off the ropes. So um, I don't know what happened, you know. Were you also more aware of getting hit so that it turned out to be a, like a hard tactical fight? That's what it was, you know. I put the pressure, but he sat there and put the pressure back. He countered. Uh, we had to watch for those open right hands. I think we did a good job on that tonight. Uh, a couple of times I got stupid again, though, leaned in there and he caught me. But, um, you know, other than that, I thought we had both fought a great fight. You know, I, I thought I gave myself the early rounds. I gave him the middle, but at the end of the fight, I just uh, put the pressure on, backed him up. When you're pressured, do you think your pressure told on him that you were able to come on in the late rounds? I think so. I mean, you start seeing my punches landing more, jabs, everything, so. Is this in its own way as satisfying as the first win? Oh, no, this is going to be as satisfying as the first one. That was the real title. Uh, but you know what? To go back out there and beat a, uh, a world champ like Jermaine Taylor, again, uh, the guy, like I said before, over and over, he's beat the Hopkins, he's beat the Wrights, he's beat everybody. Uh, and, and, you know, everybody can say about his career, but the kid lost his same fighter twice. He goes super middleweight and win it all. Give us your wish list of future opponents. Uh, whoever top rank throws at me, who's ever <laughs> out there? You guys know, I, I keep fighting. I, I fought the Mirandas, Sartucci, I fought Jermaine twice back to back. I'll fight anybody, whoever they throw at me. I mean, we're, we're trying to do the sport good. Everybody, all these fighters now, Jermaine took the fight, rematch right back to back to make the sport better. I'm doing the same thing. So I think anybody they throw out there. Thank you, and again, congratulations. Thank you, I appreciate Kelly. it. Kelly. All right, Jermaine, obviously you were intent on fighting a more measured boxing contest this time. How did you think the fight was going? I was listening to my corner, I thought, you know, I was doing pretty good. Um, you know, I, I listen to my, to my corner, so, you know, whatever they tell me to do, that's what I do. You know, um, I thought I was doing good, Larry. You know? are, you, are you saying you thought you won the fight? I thought, I, I thought it was a close fight. I thought I won it, though. I did think I won. I thought I did enough in the early rounds. You know, the last couple rounds he probably had, but in the, in the earlier fight, I thought I won it with, with my jabs and my work. Were you a little tired at the end? I got, um, he caught me with a good, a good body shot when I was on the ropes. So, so um, you know, I had to hold on to him, but you know, he's a strong fighter. I give, him, I give him all the glory. Do you think in that in some way, by fighting as well as you believe you did, that you redeemed yourself for the first fight and that you can go on with your career as a super middleweight? I don't know, Larry, you know, it's up to God, man. You know, I'm just, you know, I, I train my ass off this fight. You know, worked every day. You know, I just thought I was gonna win it, man. You fought a good fight. Thanks. Thank you, Larry. Jim? All right, thank you very much. Uh, a quick look at the official scorecards shows that Kelly Pavlik won the fight over the second half of the fight. On two of the three judges' scorecards, this fight was even at the midway point. On one of those scorecards, Dave Moretti's, Pavlik then won the last six rounds. He won four of the last six rounds on each of the other two scorecards. Ultimately, that's the margin in the fight. On the closest of the two scorecards, that of Patricia Jarman, Pavlik won that by winning both the 11th and the 12th. 
Emmanuel, they now part company for a while as apparently Jermaine Taylor will go up and fight at 168 pounds and Kelly Pavlik will go back down and defend his middleweight title at 160 pounds. What do you see in the future for both fighters? Well, I told here that there's talk right now of Kelly fighting possibly with uh, even Tito Trinidad, uh, Felix, or either possibly John Duddy. And, and so Kelly's intending to be busy. He's got a lot of fights on his schedule there. And I guess Jermaine, who didn't even want to comment to learn too much about his future, was just so disappointed. But evidently his future, according to before the fight, was at 168 pounds, although I still think that both guys can make 160. But I believe that Jermaine will eventually go up and start fighting at 168. Of course, of course, there was recently a uh, super fight in November at 168 pounds between the champion there, Joe Calzaki, and Danish challenger, Mikkel Kessler. It was Kessler's first loss. He was here in Las Vegas hunting for a future opponent. It is his intention to try to hook up with the loser of this fight. Taylor versus Kessler could be a very interesting fight. Pavlik versus anybody is an interesting fight. Larry, your final reflections on a great night. Jim, in this American era of vanishing heavyweights, where American heavyweights have become an endangered species, if not an extinct species. There's a tendency to want to crown every good-looking young American fighter as the next superstar, as the fighter who somehow is going to revive boxing in a meaningful way. If Kelly Pavlik is that fighter will know in time. You can't just pass that mantle from one fighter to the next, because once upon a time, we thought the same thing about Taylor. But Kelly Pavlik has shown tonight that he is a serious fighter who's going to take a very serious opponent to, to beat. Absolutely right. Terrific performance, as you saw, by both fighters and as far as I'm concerned, both once again are elevated in stature. Kelly Pavlik shows that innate capability of finding a way to win, sometimes even under difficult circumstances. It's going to be fascinating to see where his career as middleweight champion will go. Thanks very much for being with us on this terrific evening of pay-per-view boxing on HBO. Pavlik versus Taylor has been brought to you by MGM Grand, the city of entertainment in Las Vegas. Universal Studios American Gangster, available on DVD and HD DVD Tuesday. Corona, La Cerveza Más Fina, and by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. We'd like to thank the following internet partners. For the latest news, videos, and your favorite top-ranked fighters and fights, log on to toprank.com. And now for our entire crew, I'm Jim Lampley, saying so long from Las Vegas, Nevada.